following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Three factors for the awakening of the of the consciousness. We have to comprehend that we are asleep in order to awake. Of course, as I said, we are related uh, to the consciousness, which has nothing to do uh, with the physical body. When we say that we have to awake in the sense that uh, if our physical body, which is just a vehicle, is awakened, that has nothing to do with the consciousness. It could be snoring, consciously speaking, and with our eyes, physical eyes, very open and very attentive. It's relatively attentive. In order to awake the consciousness, I repeat, we have to know that we are asleep. In the East, in India, for instance, or China, Japan, many other countries, people know that they are asleep, consciously speaking. Therefore, they uh, work, some of them work hard in order to awake the consciousness. So you find in Asia many schools, groups, philosophies, with different teachers, gurus, that specialize precisely in that, in awakening the consciousness of uh, their disciples. But in contrast with the Eastern world, with the Occidental world, which we are right now, which we can say it is related with Europe and uh, America, people think that they are awakened. Therefore, they don't look for the awakening of the consciousness. First, because they ignore about it. In Asia, there are many doctrines related with the consciousness. And they study the consciousness, not only related with the individual, but also with nature and the cosmos. When we say that they study the consciousness in relation with nature, the cosmos, and in the, in the individual, I'm saying that uh, they study carefully the doctrine of the gods, or that is the so-called polytheism, or paganism, which frighten the mentalities, or the minds, of the occidental people, due to the fact that the narrow-minded <coughs> occidental people they ignore about the relationship of the consciousness with those so-called gods in the different religions like India, or Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, Zen Buddhism. When some accidental go into the East to study any of these religions, they always study like everything superficially. 
they do not go in the bottom of the matter. And they, of course, start by judging the religions of the East in the wrong way. Most of the books that you find or we find in the bookstores that talk about uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, are like 50% wrong. We will say that is 97% right if those books are written by Asians. But if the book is written by an accidental person, commonly he's just talking about the symbols or what they call beliefs of the people. Ignoring, of course, the depth of these uh, topics. We the Gnostics, since we study not only the Occidental religions but also the Eastern religions, of all the religions of the world, we know very well that uh, or what is that the, the people of the East call polytheism and what is a monotheistic beliefs of Judaism, Christianity and Islam world. So we understand both, psychologically speaking, because if we do not study the religion from the psychological point of view, then we are just wasting time. In order to study the religion, psychologically speaking, we have to, to know what psyche is and what logos is. If the awakening of the consciousness is what we want for psychological. Psyche is from the Greek soul and logos which means the word. So when we say logos we are saying the word in Greek. That's why one of the Gospels that was written in Greek, the Gospel of John, says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. This is the beginning with God, the Word. So Logos, when we name the word Logos, we are naming, of course, the Word, the Christ, and Psyche, the soul. So if we want to study psychology, we have to study the Word, Logos, the Christ, and the Psyche, the soul. But the Occidental psychologists, they say that psychology is the study of the mind. That's, uh, to, to begin with the explanation is we are starting in the wrong way. The mind is just a vehicle. That the consciousness, the psyche, the soul, which is the same, can use or not. Usually the mind is used by the ego, which is another word coming from the Latin that means I, myself, me, ego. Also in Greek, in order to say me, I, they said ego, similar words. So the ego is uh, mental matter. But usually the psychologists in the Occidental world, they mistake the ego with the being, with the spirit, and with the consciousness, which are completely opposite to it. In the Eastern world, in Tibet, for instance, they understand very well what the ego is, or the I, and what the consciousness is, and what the spirit is. And that which is beyond the spirit, which is the word that, that was in the beginning, that in Christianity they call it Christ. So, behold here, these uh, different topics, the Christ, the Word, the Logos, and the Spirit, the individual monad, as we say also in Greek. Monad comes from monads, which means unity, our own particular unity or individuality, which resides always beyond the mind, and even beyond the psyche, beyond the soul. 
to realize, to comprehend, to experience the Word, the Christ, the Logos. For what in Hebraic terms they said, Allah, God, Brahma, the many other names, in order to experience that, an individual spirit, we need to work with a consciousness. We need to awake the consciousness. Of course, the difference between the East and the West is like here in the West, we are more intellectual. We will say that Eastern people are more intuitive than the Occidental people. Here in this school of Gnosticism, we want to unite the knowledge that we acquire through books, lectures, and many other sources. We want to unite that with the spirit, with the being. And for that, of course, we have to work in a hard, uh, very hard discipline in order to awake the consciousness. Because one thing is to know, and another, another thing is to be. To be is related with the being. In order to be, you have to be awakened. If you are not awakened, consciously speaking, you are just a marionette, a puppet, moved by invisible forces of nature and the cosmos. Even by the forces of the government, when you don't want it. So, we are really uh, puppets or marionettes. They need to stop being a marionette or a puppet, and for that we have to awake. But how are we going to understand this matter of awakening if we don't realize that we are asleep? If we don't realize that we are sleeping, it's impossible to awake. That's why I said in the East, children receive uh, knowledge from their homes and, and their different so-called pagan religions about the situation of the cosmos, the gods, the different dimensions, etc. And they know that we are in this uh, materialistic world and that we need to awake, meaning to be aware of the other dimensions like we are in this very moment of this physical world. No one can deny we are in this physical world. But the other world, the invisible world, we can deny it or accept it. And that denying is called, in this occidental world, I don't believe. And the acceptance of this invisible world in this occidental world is called, I believe. So when somebody accepts the internal world of so any religion, it doesn't matter which one, this person says, I believe. And when the person does not believe in it, I say, I don't believe, or he says, I am an atheist. When the person says, I am atheist, what the person wants to say is this, I don't want to know anything about that invisible world, not even hear about it, because I do not understand it, intellectually speaking. I cannot prove it with my five senses, etc. Of course, we have a special matter or material inside with which we can experience the invisible world in order for the invisible world to become visible. Not for the five senses, but for the consciousness. The consciousness, the soul, the essence, that which in Zen Buddhism they call it Buddhata. It's part of the Buddha, they say. We will say, in other words, the essence, the consciousness, is part of the spirit. Because Buddha is a Sanskrit word which means illuminated one. It's obvious that our own particular spirit is the illuminated one, the Buddha. 
That Buddha wants to control its own essence, its own Buddhatta. But uh, disgracefully, the Buddhatta, the essence, the soul, the consciousness, is bottled up in the ego. That ego that we feel in our heart, somebody is accusing us of something, and is telling us, you did it, and then you answer, who, me, and you point your heart, because really in, in the heart is where you feel that I, that I that is most of the time self-esteem, self-esteem, that I which is pride, that, that we, we call my anger, when I am angry, don't touch me, because I feel that I am Superman. When I am proud, I can show you what I am. And when I show you what I am, I am vain. So all of those psychological, we call it psychological, because are certainly aggregates to the consciousness. It's most of the time is what we feel and we think we are. But if we investigate those so-called defects, vices, or errors, we will see that they are related with this physical world. My greed to accumulate any type of wealth in order to feel that we are. Some people accumulate knowledge in order to feel that they are. So, to awake the consciousness is a way of being, not what we are, really the opposite of what we are right now. So we have to understand what is that what we are. In Zen meditation, or Zen Buddhism, the disciple has to pass at least 30 years knowing themselves in order to give the second step, which is to be that which we are not. An awakened person, meaning an awakened being in the other dimensions, in the invisible world, conscious as we are in this very moment. People think in this occidental world that to be aware or to know ourselves is a matter of one week. Or if I go to this uh, seminar the weekend, or if I endure, for instance, 30 days in such and such group, I am going to know of myself. First, we have to understand that we have 49 levels. 49 levels, consciously speaking. 49 conscious levels. And most of those 49 levels are subconscious levels or unconscious levels because we are unaware of them. Some of you, for the first time, are listening that we have 49 levels. The physical body has seven levels. We have, of course, seven bodies that we have to be aware of them. Some of them we have to create and to develop the consciousness in each one of them. Each body, seven levels. This is so-called the theosophical structure of the man or human being that has seven bodies. In many schools as well, they talk about the seven bodies. But who is conscious of them? Who is using them? That's the question. Because many people talk, and I listen to many lectures and read many books about the seven bodies. But most of the time, the people that are talking about those seven bodies, they don't know anything about consciously speaking. Theoretically, they know a lot. And they think that because they know that, they're conscious of that. To be conscious of the seven bodies is to utilize them as we utilize the physical body. Well, for instance, the vital or etherical body, 
if we know how to utilize the theoretical body, we can enter into the Akashic records consciously, not dreaming of it. Somebody has astral body, he can travel with it. Mental body also can travel with it. In the world, in the world of the mind, the body of will, of conscious will, which is called the human soul. If somebody is developed that causal body, can can fly or visit many regions in Nirvana. Nirvana, which is a word which is very repeated, is repeated in many religions. Many people talk about Nirvana. Many people talk about karma, reincarnation, and many of those things. But they are not conscious of that. But they think that because they read a uh, hundred books about karma and two hundred about reincarnation, they already know what reincarnation is. And they believe that they are reincarnated. So what? If they don't believe it, it's the same thing. But we need to be as conscious of that, to awake the consciousness. And first, in order to awake the consciousness, we have to be here. The three factors I said of the awakening of the consciousness is the so-called subject, object, and location. The three words, subject, object, location, make the word soul, which you know means sun, as you end, the sun, someone that is awakened. Subject. Commonly the subject is always asleep. The subject has to be conscious. In the same moment, or in the same way that I am telling you this, work in yourself. The subject, which is in this case, as an example, myself, has to be conscious of what is talking. Even the gestures, that the subject is doing when he's talking. His body position, his arms, legs, the subject has to feel itself within the body. If the subject is not aware that he's inside of the body, he's sleeping. The body might be awakened with the eyes very often. But if the subject is not there, he's not awakened is somewhere. In this matter of awakening, we say that the subject has to be divided in two. Why? Because the subject ignores a lot of himself or herself. You won't deny that you ignore a lot of yourselves. Unless uh, if you think like certain superficial people that they think that they are the physical body and the it. They say that when they die, they go to the grave and finish. To think in that superficial way is very sad. If we accept the idea, I say the idea, because we are not conscious of it, but that we are something else than the physical body, and then we realize why some subjects are more knowledgeable or intelligent than others. If we know the law of reincarnation, also we understand that. Why some people are dumb and others not, according to that law. Inside of us, we have a lot to know, too much. Let me tell you how much we have to know of ourselves. 97%. And we know ourselves 3%. So 3% of awareness of what we are in 97% of what we don't know. So if we want to awake 100%, if we want to be aware of what we are in 100%, we have to observe ourselves. Because how are we going to know ourselves if we do not observe ourselves? If you want, for instance, to comment, if you are a critic, a movie critic, you want to comment about a certain movie, well, you have to go and observe the movie, watch the movie. 
then you give your comment. Same thing. If you want to comment of yourself, you have to observe yourself. But most of the time, people talk about themselves and certain dates. They say, when I was three years old or five years old, I was in this and this place, or when I was working in this area, and I was fighting a lot in order to survive in this physical world, and I met this friend, and I met this other friend, and they, of course, narrate their lives only in the exterior world. They ignore about the psychological situation of the different events of their life. To know ourselves is to know what I am feeling, thinking, and even the instincts that I am having in the moment in which I am. That is to be conscious. But how I am going to know what I am thinking, what type of thoughts, images are coming into my mind in the very moment when I am teaching you, or what I am feeling when I am teaching you, I am feeling hot, for instance, or cold. How I am going to know that if I am not observing myself, if I am not aware of myself? First, I have to know that I am here, then I have to observe myself. That's why we say that the object, uh, or the subject, I mean, has to be divided in two. Do you realize that I said object? Immediately I came back into myself and I said, what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the subject. So that is an observation of what I'm saying. That is wrong. Because the subject is always one in itself. So, in the East, in Zen Buddhism, in order for a monk to be conscious of himself the 24 hours of the day, he suffers a lot. Because it's very easy to forget and to stop of observing ourselves. It's very easy. It's just enough, for instance, for a man a woman walking in front of him, very beautiful, in order to forget of himself and to be dry by lust. If somebody is conscious, he's not going to do it. First we have to state that that which is the being, which is the being, has nothing to do at all with that that we call ego. The being is a real or the reality within each one of us. But what is a reality? If we are always sleeping, if we are always out of ourselves, if we are not observing ourselves, how are we going to know what is reality? The being is a reality. And in order to experience the being, God in itself, one is to be here, waking. People just to believe in God, because they are asleep. An individual which is awakening doesn't need to believe in God. Only they are sleeping people believe in God or not believe in God. The atheists, they are snoring. That's why they say that they don't believe in God. If they were awakened, they, would, they won't dare to utter that statement because we'll be like denying themselves, knowing that the being, the superior part of the soul, is there. It's always there. But the blind cannot be aware of it. That's why the blind says, I do not believe in that which is my superior part. I believe that I am just a physical body. And start to create or creating this type of stupid theories of evolution. Or start of believing in the blind way above the Bible or any other sacred book without ignoring the depth of it, or the psychological part of it. So observe yourselves. That is to be awakened. At least in a 3%. To be here now, and observing your head. Because in your head is where your thoughts, images are always coming from inside. 
And everything that comes from inside is what you are. What type of thoughts are we having? Stupid thoughts. Observe your mind. And the type of thought that you will have is what you are. And the mind will justify always everything, of course. So, we don't, when we observe ourselves, we don't have to justify ourselves. We need to accuse or condemn ourselves. We have just to observe. Like when we are observing a movie, to observe what good things we have and what bad things we have. And if we observe our heart, then we will observe more foolish things. Oh, I feel compassion, they say. It's just an ego there, which is not the being. What they call compassion, to know what compassion is, is to go inside of the being of God. It has nothing to do with selfishness or fear. Uh, some people are compassion. They say compassion. They call it compassion, but it's not. Because they are afraid that if they are not like that, they are going to go to hell. Or they are not going to reincarnate in a better way. So in order to be here now, to be really compassionate, we have to have no fear at all. No fear. Fear should not exist, because fear is the root of many feelings. Like jealousy, fear of losing what we think is ours. My wife, my husband, my children, my parents, mine, mine. I feel it here, it's mine. It's not ours. So we feel fear because we are afraid of losing what we have. Losing the foundation of what we are. If we are, have our foundation not in superficial things but in our real being, fear cannot exist. Because God is eternal. But only but we only believe in God. It's just a belief in the mind, but it's not a truth for the consciousness. The one that experiences God has no fear. Because already knows what God is and what is going to happen if everything disappears. Even the physical body is dead. To observe the heart is precisely that. To observe that, because here in the heart what we feel that we are. I am what I am. False things is what we are. But not reality. Or not real things. Many things. But we have to observe. Not just one, uh, right now, in this lecture, what we are listening to me. But you are there seated uh, very carefully. No. All your life. If the awakening of the conscious is what we want to be 100% conscious, and then we have to observe. And then we are going to start knowing what, what, how, how foolish we are. Sometimes, if, when you observe yourself, the different feelings and thoughts and sensations that you are, or are coming from inside of you, you just sometimes you laugh at yourself. So I didn't know that I was so stupid. The type of feeling that is that is really stupid. But when sometimes we think, oh, that is a good, good, good virtue that I have. And then we go into meditation to observe that carefully. And then we realize that we were mistaken. That that what we thought that was good is just garbage. But we were sure that was a good thing inside of us. And it's because most of the time we act mechanically. As I said, Zen monks, they endure 30 years in order to know themselves. And when they know themselves, they discover that that we call the psychological characteristic, some character that we have, some feature. Because we, as an individuals, we are different. From this point of view, or psychological point of view, we are different in a very bad way, of course. Bad way because some people will be lustful 
and these other ones will be greedy, and those other ones will be angry, or proud, pain. So each one has a different feature. And according to our feature, is how we attract situations, events, to our life. So when we observe ourselves, we also observe what type of situations are we attracting into our individual, particular universe or cosmos. Because we are a microcosmos, cosmos and small. So what type of friends do we have? Observe your friends. Because in our friends we sometimes reflect what we are. And we see what we are. I like this person very much because in him or in her I'm seeing something that I have that I like a lot. But what is that that I like that I like also in this person? I have to know that. Every time that I see this person, it made me feel sick. Why? What is the characteristics of this person that are making me feel sick? Why is this person showing me that I have inside, that I ignore? Because this person is just a mirror of what I am. So I have to discover that. This is how you start to understand yourself. This knowing of yourself is the same as the, as the Lord Jesus Christ says in the Gospel. And why are you looking at the eye of your neighbor? Because he or she has a piece of wood in his or her eye. And you don't realize that, that you have a lumber yard in your eye. Meaning that you see the defects or vices of your neighbor, immediately instead of criticizing the neighbor, go back into yourself with more attention and observe why I'm feeling disgusted with this person. What is what I have, what do I have inside that I feel that? Maybe it's because I am uh, more perfect than this person, and that I feel so important, that I cannot tolerate. I mean, I have no tolerance, because I feel self-important. Of course, the being has nothing to do with self-importance, because the reason of the being of to be is the being itself. But we justify many things that we have, and we always protest against the negative events in our life. I suffer too much in this life. I, that was a beautiful person, because I was always good with everybody. Meanwhile, I suffer too much. Everybody treats me in the rotten way. Why? Why are we attracting those type of situations? What is that that we have inside as a magnet that attracts that type of iron? Because the drunkard is blaming that he's always sick and his liver with pain and that he's always being uh, robbed close to the bar. Nobody likes him. Well, but the problem is that is an ego inside of him that likes to drink and to be drunk. And when he goes into those bars, he meets other type of people that are very lower people, that are always thinking and robbing in order to have money or to drink. So if he changes his sight, he will be related in, in other situations, in other events, better. But for that he has to observe himself. Because if one is not observing himself, how is he going to know about it? And he had to start right now 
by feeling that we are inside of the body and observing what type of level we have. The level of the being. The conscious level. Being like that is to be conscious. And you will always find something new when you are like that. Something new inside of you and outside of you. And while you are like that, you have to apply death to that state. Death to that which is not good and is inside of you. When death arrives, something new comes. Psychological death. And not thinking like most of the people think. Psychological surviving. If I die, physically speaking, I hope I will go to heaven. With all of this garbage that I have here. With all of my anger, lust, pride, vanity. I hope I will go beside Peter at the door and helping him. Right? Welcome to heaven. <laughs> Really is what we want. To survive. To, 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 to survive the garbage that we have inside. And that we are looking always with any religion. To find for a hope. Because we don't want to die. We don't want to change. Because when I say to change. It's to die. But not physically. Psychologically speaking. To die. And as the master... Krishnamurti says, and not dying because I need something, or hoping for something new. Just dying because we are aware, we realize that what we have is rotten. If you are dirty, let's say, put an example, I don't think that you are like that. One week without showering, and then you will smell your armpit, and everybody says, oh God, I smell. Right? So you go and take a shower. Why? Are you expecting something new? No, what you want is to be clean, right? Because you don't like the way that you are. And then you go and take a shower. You clean your nails, clean your hair, etc., and even perfume yourself. I mean, you are not expecting something new. You just clean yourself because to be clean is something good. It's just that. But there are many of us <clears throat> that I want to die and to do meditation, etc., in order to have uh, clairvoyance, in order to develop some type of power, to be more psychic, right? Greed. Too much greed. And greed is not good. Got to be uh, Im Im imitating St. Francis of Assisi. He was having too much powers that he was hiding from people because when he was praying certain forces of nature were acting and things were seen physically speaking and he was floating in the air and he didn't like that I mean he didn't like to show that so humble he was that he was always hiding in the mountain I hope when that is happening, nobody is going to look at me. But somebody was always there because we were chasing him, right? What's going on with St. Francis? But what are going to happen with that? If something like that happens, suddenly we levitate. Then we call our parents, <coughs> relatives, friends. See how I float in the air. Look how <laughs> wonderful I am, right? Because we are vain. And we are always coveting. Coveting? Uh, powers. For what? The powers of the soul, the so-called cities, always come to us without us covering them. Just like that. If we are dying because we realize that we are filthy. <coughs> this is the only thing. When we observe ourselves, we realize that we are filthy. So let's take a shower. Right? And that take shower means to analyze, to comprehend with patience. That particular defect or vice or error that personifies us. And we, the techniques that thanks to God we have, 
we can annihilate that. In order not to be a better person, it's just in order to be what I am. Because the being is. That is what is. So when that which is is inside of the spirit, which is inside, which is the spirit, comes, it just appears as what he is. Or what it is. Because I don't like to name that which is God he or she. Because God is not he, is not she, is both forces. How do I know that? Well, by experience. Of course, we have to experience that. And then that which is, which is the being, is appearing. And with the being, all the attributes or cities, so-called powers, as we, in this very moment, for instance, we see, we smell, we hear, we touch, we taste. We don't need to show that, right? Or to feel proud because we are seeing, because everybody sees, everybody smells. Everybody hears, right? But when we do something that the common people do not do, then we are proud, vain, conceited. And that's bad. Because the senses of the inner being are coming unto us easily, and there is nothing marvelous. Everybody has that. What happens is that if we develop that, it's because we are working with it. We want to be a awakened person. And to be an awakened person is not to be an asleeping person. But it has nothing to do with pride or with vanity. But to go there and walking with robes or let it grow the hair or the beard and many other things that people do. Like St. Francis of Assisi, I repeat. To be just a person. Having a lot of powers and just behaving like a normal person. Healing persons, I mean, he was sick, according to his path, suffering sickness, trying to find a doctor. Meanwhile, he was healing others. He went and going into this city in order to find a doctor, in order to, to cure his illness. And many others were coming unto him, and he was holding their hands and healing them. Meanwhile, he was sick. I mean, he, he was not trying to show that he was a healer. But just the being, the word, in other words, were acting for him. Because really, if we want to experience that what that which is God, or for God to act through us, if we are vain, proud, conceited, self-important, no way. Because it's exactly the opposite Humbleness is what we need. And humbleness is that which is contrary to that that we are a lot, because we are a lot of that. So we have to die. Death. Psychological death. And for that we have to observe ourselves. Because if you say, I recognize, or like some people do, that they go to this uh, religion, they confess their sins. And then the priest is saying, I forgive you. Now go in peace. So they start sin again. Anyhow, the weekend, Saturday or Sunday, I go again to the priest and he is going to forgive me. Right? A vicious circle. So we don't have to go in a vicious circle. We have to accomplish with that commandment that says, you have to sanctify Saturday, or make the seventh day holy, which is psychologically speaking with death. We have to talk here about astrology, really with the seventh day, which is Saturn. Saturn is a very death. The annihilation of oneself, not physically, because that will be silly, but psychologically speaking. Or oh, uh, uh, what the Bible says. If you want to come towards me, said the Lord the Christ, deny yourself, or deny thyself. That implies a lot. Because it's, how are you going to deny what you are if you don't know what you are? And how are you going to know what you are if you don't observe yourself? 
if you are sleeping, you have to be conscious. So that's the first step. The subject, here and now, to be divided. To feel that we are inside and observe when we say, when we think, that we feel actions, movements, everything. And at the same time, comes the second factor. It has to be added. Added in the same way that we add another mirror for the candle that we have in the middle. First, one mirror to remember ourselves that we are inside of the body and we say that the flame reflects into the mirror. But we have to observe what we are and then we put another mirror. So it's the same flame, the same consciousness in the very instant which is remembering and observing. But also we have to be aware of what is in front of us, objects. And then we put another mirror in front of the candle. We expand the consciousness without losing the first and the second mirror as the candle, as the light of the reflects in all of them. And then we observe people, things, objects, we are conscious of the objects. This is what we have to be also. In order to be awakened. Because if you are remembering yourself and observing yourself, but you are not aware of the objects, you are doing that, for instance, when you are walking on the streets. And you don't uh, observe that there is an object which is called bath, which is coming at very speed, velocity on you, you pass very conscious, of course, the street, and then you go to the other, right, to the grave. So you have to be conscious of the objects. Many things that are around you could be dangerous, could be not. When we are observing that, by always keeping, I remember, the light reflected in the first mirror and the second mirror, which is to remember ourselves, to observe ourselves, and in the third to observe the objects out of you. And then you realize that sometimes when that state of consciousness, when you are out of your body, when that consciousness, which is not the body, is out, it means when the physical body is snoring in the bed, resting, tired, and then you, as consciousness, is out. You are out of that body. But you are not in the physical plane. You are in another dimension. Call it dream dimension. Because in order to call it another name, we have to be conscious of that. We can call it astral plane. But are we aware of it? If we call it dream dimension, it will be more uh, acceptable to our consciousness. Because it's what we go there to dream. To have foolish dreams. So when we are there, in that dimension, which is not the physical, Sometimes you see things very strange. Pink elephants, for instance, or a lion. Did you ever dream, uh, or you were in some place and suddenly you saw an object, which was an animal? A tiger, a crocodile. Sometimes you see things there, animals, which are not common in the physical plane. If you are accustomed to observe, to analyze these, and then you will if you are observing yourself and observing outside, what am, what's happening here? Why am I seeing this lion here? Or suddenly uh, you jump and you jump like the, the, the incredible hawk. Big jumps. So what's going on here? If you observe, why well, I'm jumping so high and so long? I am not the incredible hawk, but I am doing it. Oh. Then this is not physical. Because according to the science of these times, we know the theory of gravity. If you want to fly here, it's not possible. Only the birds fly. But some people tell me, you know that I was dreaming that I was flying? And yeah, you were dreaming that. Because if you were aware in that moment that you are not a bird, then you will realize that you were not in your physical body. You were, you were out. So if you are accustomed to do that, acquiring always objects, 
trying to see something new, rare, when you go out of your body, like every day you do, you will see rare things. Because in the astral plane, you will always find very weird things, always. But if you are not accustomed to observe the objects, you will go there and you won't realize that you are out of your body. But if you realize that, if you are conscious, then that mantra for astral projection and all of that is just silly. You don't need that, because you are awakened. And you, uh, you realize, oh yeah, I remember, I know where I go, I left my body, I was tired, I came from work, now I'm here, out of my body. Well, it would be silly to dream, or to project dreams. Let us investigate things here in this dimension. I know that in this dimension I can fly, because there is no gravity. So let us fly, but consciously. No, that's a dream, because the person that is dreaming is not conscious of it. We will say, when a soul is out of the body, like all the souls of the earth are out of the body, any time that they are physically sleeping, the soul is out. If the soul is not aware, that soul is sleeping. But it is enough for the soul to say, oh, I am sleeping, my body is in the bed, it is enough in order for stop sleeping or dreaming. It is enough in order to awake. If a person says, I know that I am out of my body, that person is not dreaming. He is conscious. Immediately is conscious. And if that person keeps himself remembering that he is outside of his body all the time, he is awakened. He is not dreaming. And then he or she can investigate the mysteries of life and death out of the body. But disgracefully, because we are accustomed in this physical plane to be asleep, we don't observe. First, we don't observe ourselves. Second, we don't observe the, ex we don't observe the exterior world. Things happen around us and we don't know. There are some people that somebody can be, be killed very close to them, and they ignore about it. Well, that person was killed. Oh, but he, the, the assassination was happening in the other side of my house. But how come I didn't know about it? I think it's because we are always asleep. We are aware. We will know a little bit more about it. To observe objects is to be awakened. But if we observe objects like Sherlock Holmes, but without remembering that we are here and observing our thoughts and feelings, it doesn't work. First, we have to feel that we are in the body. Second, we have to observe ourselves. Third, the objects. As the light, I repeat, which is reflecting in three mirrors. But also, that light has to be reflected in another mirror, the fourth, which is location. In which location I am, which place is this? And then the consciousness expands in the space. Trees around us aware of the location. Without losing the observation of the objects, and without losing the observation of myself, and without forgetting that I'm here. That is the expansion of the consciousness, to be awakened. If we were like that, and we do that effort, then we will see how everything will change around us, because we are always conscious. And when we talk about location, we have to think, or to analyze, the place, enters the dimension aspect of the matter. We are in this house, but in which dimension are we? Are we perhaps in the fifth dimension, in the astral plane, in the world of dreams? Are we sure that we are here with the physical body? Did you ever have a dream? That in the very moment that we were having that dream out of your body, you were swear that you were in the physical plane? 
you know, that thing that was happening was really physical. And then suddenly you will walk in your bed and you say, thanks God, that was a dream. What a horror. I was killing somebody. Are we sure that we are in the physical plane? Or maybe this is a dream. Maybe you are dreaming that you are listening to a lecture. Somebody invited you to come to this lecture and you came in the world of dreams. But your physical body is sleeping. And you are going to awake right now, physically. So how are we going to be sure of that? The dimension aspect of this psychological matter. We have to study to be very serious, of course. First, physically speaking, we utilize our consciousness. Law of gravity exists in the third dimensional world. Law of gravity does not exist outside of this physical world. If I am out of my body, that means that if I jump, I will float. But I have to do it. It comes into my memory the story of the Master Samael On Veor, the founder of this association. He tells us that he was in a certain place, and he was always working with that three factors of the awakening of the consciousness. Subject, he remembered himself. And then object. And suddenly he saw on the desk of this lady which he was talking with, two butterflies of glass. But the glass butterflies were moving their wings like real butterflies. And he said to himself, this is impossible. These artificial butterflies, meanwhile they are moving their wings. And then he observed the location, the place. He said, this is not a place where I am living. And he realized there was another country. And immediately he said, this is not this is not my, my country. And then he said, please, uh, can you uh, excuse me for a while? And then the lady says, yeah. And he says, excuse me. And then he went out, and then we saw that he was not body, and jumped. And he was floating in the air. And then when he returned, he says, well, sure. Oh, I am here in the astral plane, the world dreams. My body is sleeping. And then he returned with the lady. And then he talked to the lady and told her, uh, such a such person, right? I am glad to tell you that right now we are in the astral plane called the world of dreams. And your body is sleeping in the bed. And I'm here talking with you in other dimension. But the lady was looking at him like sleepy, you know, with Somebody walk, sleepy, sleepy walk, sleepy walk. <coughs> she didn't realize it. Just, what is this man telling me? It's not it's crazy. He was thinking that way. He comes uh, to me to talk about certain topics, and suddenly he's saying that we are in the room and we are messing with. It's crazy. And then he realized that he was wasting his time. This is this lady when awake because he's not working with his consciousness or with her consciousness. So. He turned away and walked away and went to another place to investigate other things instead of wasting his time there. So the same thing will happen with us. Sometimes we dream that we are in another country. Our family, for instance, is in California and we dream that we are in California. We have to realize. Or if you don't re uh, recognize the place, you can ask another person, excuse me. What is the name of this place, of this country or city? And then you will realize, oh, strange. I am not in the physical plane. And in order to prove that, you have to jump. If you cannot jump, because you are afraid of, oh, what the people will say about it, you know, if they look at me jumping. Well, then just try to pull your finger. Because the consciousness out of the body is elastic. If you pull your finger, it will stretch. But if you try to pull your finger here in this physical plane, with all my strength, I will maybe break the bone, right? But I won't stretch it. But in, internally, it happens. 
One day, for instance, I remember I was traveling in a bus. And a customer, as I have always, a customer of remembering myself, of serving my thoughts, and then I'll serve people. This is a bus. It's a location of bus. What I'm doing here? Am I maybe dreaming? I cannot jump here. I'm inside of a bus. But then, with my finger, I tried to pass through the seat that was in front of me. Because I know that the matter in the astral plane is elastic and also, how you call it, plastic. And then I push my finger and my whole hand passed through the seat in front of, uh, I mean, the bathroom seat where it was in front of me. I said, well, this is obvious. Okay. I am in the astral plane. And then I just do this, and I pass through the wall of the bus. And then the bus keep moving or running. Then I was floating in the air, but it was normal. In the world of dreams, in the world of the astral plane, that is a phenomena which is very common. <coughs> but here in the physical plane, of course, it's not common. Another thing I remember, for instance, I was with this master, and this master was showing me you look at these people, they're here in this second sphere of hell. And I had to do something in the physical world for them. Immediately I was looking and saw caverns. So yeah, this is the second level of hell. But immediately because of serving everything, I was conscious of that. And then I approached this couple of persons that ignore that they are down there because they are asleep. He said, look how I put my hand in this rock and put it in my hand in the rock. You see, you realize that? That we are not physically? He said, yeah, it's looking at me. you can do all of that. And many other things. But if you are not accustomed to that here, if you are sleeping always, identify, identify with this physical world, you won't have this type of experiences. Your consciousness will not expand. And then, when your consciousness is expanding, and knowing about yourself and the universe, because in the Temple of Delphi, there is this statement that says, Nocete ipsum, man know thyself, and you will know the universe, and all the beings of that universe. You would say, and the gods. Of course, you, you start knowing that. And then you realize what the scriptures of the holy religions like Buddhism, Islamism, Taoism, Zoroastrism, Judaism, Christianity, are. And then you stop uh, criticizing religions like the ignorance do, criticizing the holy religions that because they are polytheists, or they are pagans, they are worthless, they are not good, only we, because we believe only in one God. Meanwhile, they don't know that God. All religions are holy, all of them, but all the religions are unholy, is what we are unholy. So in order to understand our particular religion and the other religions, we have to study ourselves psychologically. This is the only way. We have to awake, because we are asleep. And we are just criticized. That's why it is said, the expression of ignorance is a lie. And some people lie without knowing that they are lying because they think that they know the truth. So that's the first step to awake the consciousness with the three factors that we gave you. If we experience that, if we practice with it, we will awake. We will be conscious of all the mysteries of the universe. But if we do not do that, we will be always as we are right now.
To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Thank you.